Hello everyone, my name is Frigid Hyperion, and welcome back to the Wilds of Wildmount campaign. We are in the middle of session 44, this will be part 2. Emily, take it away. Okay. Um, having gone around and collected uh, uh, tips from uh, patrons after uh, telling his story, uh, Alexander... Uh, uh, it makes his way uh, to the table that you all are sitting at. Uh, he says, uh, uh, so it looks like we're just writing on the last of the historians, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm surprised Barkley's not here yet. He's normally uh... effort or so punctual. Yeah. Would there be any reason why he's late? Uh, probably brown nosing or offering to do extra work at the end of his shift. Hmm. Something along those lines. He's probably the most serious of, of us about the Concord side of things, and he's also the highest ranking member of us, but. It comes with a lot more studying. <laughs> well, you know, and as for as for Hazel, she's late for everything. Like, chronically. I don't even know what she's doing. She somehow managed to be late for things we left at the same time for. You know, it's part of her charm. That's considered charm. <laughs> in some ways, you'll you'll get it when you uh, meet it, her. It, it's probably charming in the future, but it hasn't caught on yet. Oh, I what? I think she's just late to the trend. Is that is that a you divination know? wizard joke, Edward? No, that was a late joke, and oh. it took you long enough to get it. <laughs> well, well put, well done. After approximately 15 minutes, uh, you see uh, a woman uh, walk into the walk walk into the tavern. Uh, you see a it's a a very strong presence uh, as, as as she opens up the door, and it's almost as if on cue. Uh, wind blows throughout the cavern uh the tavern no cavern, cavern. Uh, the tavern <laughs> uh as uh joyously making her way uh to the table uh uh a a dark skinned uh wood elf uh, uh skips over oh, hi folks <laughs> sorry i'm late um Drinks? Hi. Hi, Hi. it's a bit oh, of a while. Oh, oh, Brian! Oh, I'm so happy to see you! Oh my, oh, it's been so long! Oh, oh, don't, don't tell me. This is the party. Bella told us all about it. Oh, and you, you must be Edward. You, mm -hmm. wind chime. Yes, you, yes. And you are. I don't actually know who you are. Team. Team. <laughs> nice to meet you, Team. Pleasure. Um, Hazel. Uh, she kind of saddles up next to uh, uh, next to Bella, and you see, uh, like, kind of puts puts her arm on the back of her chair. Uh, and, uh, and says, Well, oh, this is quite the surprise. I'm so happy that you're all here. Oh, having the adventures you've always dreamed about? Something like that, yeah. Although I you know really have missed on? you guys. I've really missed you too. 
Do you hear what's been going on at the Wild Mother's Lighthouse? Hear yeah, about it. We, we were talk. there. <laughs> you were there? Oh. Oh, we were the ones that were uh, sent to figure out the magnitude of the problem. Wow. Tell me, tell me all about it. I want to hear more. Not really much to tell, to be honest. The thread's ongoing, but, uh, well. When we got, when we noticed the commotion, we talked to the guard. Used our good name to uh, have them hire us to figure out what was going on. We headed up to the lighthouse and found it awash with blighted brine. Blighted vines. Curling and coiling around the entire building and blocking our path. So, of course, we made use of our heads and started burning through the vines, which spewed forth deadly poison that we just barely avoided. When we got inside, there were a whole host of plant creatures waiting to ambush us. But, again, the fire dealt with them. When we headed up, though, well, I think that part might be, uh, might be secret. Secret? I'm not sure I'm allowed to tell you. Oh, come on, Brian! You can't just dangle it in front of us like that. You heard can't the I? woman. Fine. Oh, no. Fine, but you didn't hear it from me. And we can't go spreading this around yet. There was a sword. She gestures to Winchime. Want to mm. show them? Oh, yes, it's this. Sorry, she like pulls it up from her, uh, out of her case, or whatever she's holding it in, um, and lifts it above the table. Thrust into the crystal of the Wild Mother, corrupting with dark magics. The... There we, when we finally managed to pull it out with Windchime's her uh, hero, Heroculin strength. The enchantment vanished. We have no idea where the culprits might be. That's why I say it's still a bit of a thread to follow. Well, regardless, I'm I am absolutely elated that you uh, were able to restore uh, Malora's lighthouse. Incredible. See, she's like, like eyes uh, across the tavern are all uh, um, looking at the sword that you have placed on the table. It's quite beautiful. Right? And well, we made sure it wasn't still cursed or anything, so... Well, how'd you do that? Edward here is a master of arcane magic. I, I wouldn't call myself a master. Well, Are no. you? Well, not yet. But you're definitely... But I'd argue to say you're better than anyone here in the party. You could probably hold oh a debate uh, fairly effectively with a couple of the professors. I'm sure there's a few that are more well-versed, but there's definitely a couple that are less. Hell, you were the one who was able to spot an arcane, an arcane grimoire within a couple of smut books. Still don't know how you managed to pull that <laughs> off. 
Um, did you just say um, books? Well, I mean, like, in my defense, Brian was the one that immediately was enthralled <laughs> by it. It was her who, you know, <coughs> noticed it. I just have an appreciation for fine literature of all walks of life. Fine literature, no indeed. Justin here. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't have found it if it weren't for you. Oh, look at you two. <laughs> well. I just realized it sounded like I had read Edward a smut book. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, but you did stay in the basement with those books for a suspiciously long time. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't with take that With the magical much plant that allowed you to read the hidden writing. We were doing actual research at that point. <laughs> his brain turns as red as a fucking beet. Yep. Anyway, where is Barkley going to show up? He's never this late. I don't really know. Um, you are right about that. He is... I mean, yes, he has been canceling more often than not, but he normally lets us know by now. He knows this was important, right? But... Well, you made sure he knew, right? I mean, I didn't tell anybody that you were here. But you told but... them it was important, right? Yeah, of course. Given he's bonded with the group, you'd think he'd show up. You think he's um, alright? I'm sure he's fine. He's been very busy. Yeah. Busy. You see Alexander say. Alright, what's the drama? It, nothing. It's it's really not that big of a deal. She tilts her head to the side. You're Look. about to not tell me the story. <sighs> There's not even a story to tell. He just has been ditching a lot. He fucking rarely shows up anymore. When did this start to happen? Uh, about two months ago. So right after I left. Yeah. Do I have to go talk to him? Is that what this is? I mean... I'm sure he is fine. He just has a lot of extra responsibilities now, you know. And he's so far up in the archives. I mean... What is he, level 6? Level 7 now? A 6, but... He's he's working on it. That's all he ever does is work on it. I'm... Look, it, it's really important. I'm, I'm sure there's... I'm sure things are fine. He just put his head down to the work, you know? You know how he gets. Just focuses and... You also know that he is really punctual to a fault and that he's an incredible stickler for letting people know when things are happening. He's never out of contact. I mean... That's not always true. <laughs> okay, you're right. There was that one time when he was in the middle of his level 5 entrance studying. He just never was out of that. But Do you think he's studying for entrance level 7 at this point? I don't really care what he's up to. To be honest.
You see, he takes a big old drink. You know what? We we need some music. And uh, Alexander gets up and uh, begins to begins to play some music. <laughs> What the hell is going on between those two? Look, I really... I don't actually know, to be honest. I mean, what's... I just... I, if there is something going on between them, either of them, of them have told otherwise. I, I, I gather that at least... Alexander is a little bit upset because um, Barkley has been kind of ditching us lately. Something, something about other friends, etc. Look, I, I'm sure all of this is just gonna pass in no time at all. You know. I guess. I mean, it's... It's a little weird, but... Alright. I mean... I, look, I, I didn't want to, like, break it down too hard in the letter, but... Um, things sometimes can be pretty tense within the group since you left. Like... I, I don't know if it was just, like, worry or whatever, but... It hasn't always been... The past month, two couple months haven't been like. Yeah. Anyway, what I think she's trying to say is, we've missed you a lot. Let's do you guys. I mean, I am off adventuring and all that, and I am having a very fun time. But I do miss this, the studying, the. Group hanging out. Good. But I take it you're not going to be around for too terribly long. I mean, I wasn't planning on being, but... I mean, seeing my old room, seeing... Yeah, I'm finished studying. I'm not so sure anymore. She looks at her party. I want to continue adventuring. I also want to stay here. What do you, you have things you really want to get done? Wouldn't time you want to save your parents in their village? Mm -hmm. Shame you have like 16 things you want to do. <laughs> Edward, you have your parents. Yes. I mean, Animal has got his stuff. Thorin, you're looking for the Wild Mother, and... You've gone around doing that? I mean... I just want to learn about the world. I've been learning a lot here. Have learned a lot here, and I mean my adventures—they help me learn more, and I'm sure I could combine them a little bit. I 
I didn't expect this to be such a hard trip. I don't know if I'm ready to make it one way or another right now. You see Hazel, like, kind of, she grabs your hand and says, Well, Brian, what is it that you want? I want to spend time with my friend. And I want to learn more about this world. The problem is, is that... I have two options that do that very well. And both feel pretty awesome. And I don't want to have to choose between my friends. I don't want to choose between my love of adventuring and my love of history and knowledge. Well, you know that no matter how far away that you go, we'll be here waiting for you. Even if tensions can be tight. We just miss you, that's all. Can we take a five minute break? Sure. Because I have things I want to ask you about. Yeah. Well, before I make any of those decisions, I should probably talk with, uh, probably talk with, uh, Professor Namorn. Well, I mean, can't you just do that tomorrow? Oh, You'll yeah. at least be here for that, right? Oh, we're, I think we're planning on staying for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we'll definitely be here tomorrow, perhaps the day after. Wonderful. Where the fuck is Barkley? Is it like him to not show up for attendance entirely? No, they've said I multiple mean, times that he's usually very punctual, if not early. <sighs> he's changed a bit of late, though. Again, he's... Alexander wasn't wrong when he said that we... He dips a lot. Or shows up for five minutes and then leaves. Or... Not at all. I, but he normally tells you, right? Sometimes. Most of the time. I mean, I did tell him it was important. So. I don't know. And as if on cue, the door to the tavern swings open. And Barkley makes his appearance. Oops. Background <laughs> 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 yeah. character. Uh, as uh, he he walks in. Uh, makes eye contact with you, Brian, and it gives you a, a soft smile and a wave. Um, he goes and he says, um, well, I certainly didn't expect you to show up today. Well, surprise! I heard you make the next promotion up. Six? Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. I've worked very hard for it. And I uh, hear you've been out adventuring. Good for I you. I have. Thank you. 
Learned a lot. Sheen, tur just, Sheen turns the different. sword and jokingly says, Who's Brian again? <laughs> <coughs> Bella and Hazel both laugh. Um, you see uh, insight check. What do you mean insight check? And at advantage uh, for you, Brian, or anybody else who wants to do it can just do a straight roll. Eight. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. The eight. one time I will oh. ever have advantage in insight. And you roll a one and a two. No, it's <laughs> a 15. 15. They're definitely better. No, that's the way. That's how I rolled earlier, and I was livid. I rolled a one and a two, too. Uh... And the one counted. <laughs> you see, um, Barkley has made explicitly like with his body language has not made any gesture towards um, Alexander and instead sits with his back facing him whether it's intentional or not the signs are pretty clear he is ignoring him well I've told you what uh What's happened with me, if you tell me about what's happened with you? Certainly. Um, ladies first. I've already recounted a lot of this, so yep. I'm just gonna... I know. Yep. Yes. Well, quite, uh, fascinating. It sounds like you've had quite the time. Really? Not even a reaction to the first dragon turtle sighting in a hundred years? Well, it's exciting. Yes. Dragon turtle. Oh, this must have been scary. Never again. <laughs> All right, what's up with you? Out with it. Um, I've just been busy. And um, your own work head. at the... Work at the... Uh, the archive has gone quite well, um, and been working on this most recent batch of uh, of, of filing and uh, the inscribing mostly. It's a lot of scribing. Um, a couple of research projects going on in the background. It's, should be in need to be a TA soon. Should be good. Maybe my man plan is here shortly to um, take the test to get into level 7. Quite. My company. Yep. Seven. Difficult test. That's, I believe level 7 is where they do the, uh, there's the ability to contact Ayun there, right? Yep. You're all right. How many people have had that honor amongst the student body? Three? Five, but, yeah. contacting Ayun. Ayun is still around. I thought none of the gods were around. Well, there's a certain truth to that. The gods are around, right? They exist, and we can contact them, um, and they can contact us. That's how divinity and divine powers work, you know, for your you said it, clerics, you know, any divine caster or whatnot. Um, but they aren't able to physically walk the earth. That is Gods my cannot walk the earth. Or directly smite you in any way. <clears throat> Indirectly, very much so. 
um, regardless, getting in contact with Ayun um, is quite beneficial to my research. Quite beneficial to anyone's research. Hmm. That is true. I, well, I hate to ask, but I've seen you like this maybe twice before. What's the project? Your your whole affect, you, you're not 100% in conversations. I know this. And I may not always be good at reading people, but I know you pretty damn well. What's eating you up? What's, what's the stump? Brian, why aren't you letting your friends help you? Because they can't. Privileged information? He gives a nod of the head. Well, Brian, it's been truly wonderful to see you. We'll talk again sometime soon. Yes? Um, Tomorrow, and be on time for the meeting. Um, and she's gonna... She's going to pull him in for a hug, and she's gonna whisper in his ear. I don't know how much I can help you. I don't know how much you're allowed to share. But we have all helped you through projects when we've been able to as you've helped us through ours you might be the best student out of us but we all love you and want to take care of you let us help let them help if I can thank you Brian I'll be seeing you later and he walks out He seems rather distant. He's stressed. Out of his mind stressed. He's stumbled into some research project that's telling him something's very, very wrong. The last time he did this, it was a historical document that ended up having pretty dire consequences for a nation's uh, monarchy. Figured out that uh, well, the divine right that they held, she's using heavy quotations, uh, would have, by their own logic, been passed down through a very different line. The information was very quickly upgraded in uh, sensitivity, and the project was taken from him. Whatever he's researching now has him even more stressed. Never seen him so cold. Hmm. How much time does he normally take for himself? I don't think I've ever seen him do it without us forcing him to. I had to guess Alexander probably tried to force him to. Barkley rebuffed him rather sharply, and Alexander and him are a little pissed at each other. That's what I got from the body language at least. It seems natural. Upsetting, but... Just hope he hasn't wrapped himself up into anything too dangerous. Ironic coming from me, but... <laughs> well, anything of that... Uh... Anything of that sentiment would be 
ironic coming, coming from many of us, considering what we've all done. But you let us know if you need help too, Brian. Although, if it comes to him, the fewer people that chip in, probably the better. Given that you wouldn't tell me what it was. Well, do you have three? Now or two? Oh, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm rank three. It's no big deal. <laughs> I was studying for it when you went. Right. <laughs> I was pretty close to three, too. I remember I failed it a couple of years back. They said I was too trusting of individuals on the character test. And prone to getting myself in dangerous situations where the information might not be safe. Oh god, were they right? <laughs> oh no, you, you're not, you don't put yourself in dangerous situations at all, jumping onto oh. a ship you don't know anything about. Oh. It seems completely safe. And he <sighs> gives a big fucking grin. <laughs> We wouldn't even talk to you about it. Which means it has to be level four or five. Okay, so you're still level two, right? Yep. And I think... I don't know. I definitely think I want... In terms of, like, long term... I think I would like to hit level... Level four, and then... From there, I think I'm good. I think I'll go out and use the knowledge I have and actually try to do some good in the world. I see. I... I might go... When I talk to... Uh... Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm pretty content with where I'm at, but there's a bit more, you know, like... Oh, absolutely. And it's always nice to be able to get to the study materials that some of your references reference, reference to. Completely. I think I might talk with Professor Namorn about doing a field test for level three or four. I mean... All the same personality traits are probably there, but I've been at the school for longer than any of us. <coughs> and uh, I certainly have the knowledge for it. It's always been the character problems. Maybe with the experience and the power I have, they might be at least confident that I can protect the knowledge, if not keep it out of dangerous situations. Well, I, don't know I think good. that is a fine idea. I mean, there's nothing wrong with continuing your studies. Even if it's not at the university, you know? The world has so much to offer in terms of knowledge. I mean, there have been many a people who, uh, heroes, as I'm sure you're more <laughs> aware that, of, that have haven't studied a single day at the university that have get grant, been granted access to level 8 or 9, you know. Essentially, only when those artifacts were needed to stop a pretty grave threat. That's true. I think the archive at level 9 has a, a ziggurat. Did they not? I mean... It's rumored it's all, anyway. Yeah, it's all rumors, but I assume they have a lot hidden in the depths. Stuff we wouldn't even want to know. Stuff like what Barclay's working on. Uh 
Ziggurat. If he's only level five, I'm sure he's not working on a vi Ziggurat. Um, he's not level five. But level six. I keep forgetting. It. Wait, I'm sure he's not working on the Ziggurat. Yeah. Contacting other planes is level seven and above. We know that. Level six is the step below. Horkos? What's this about contacting other planes? There's a level of danger in being able to cross or contact um, beings that were locked up uh, during the calamity. It's dangerous because we know these are powers way beyond what our world can handle and that they're um... Well, locked up for good reason, I would assume. Mm -hmm. The artifacts and knowledge that would allow one to potentially break the chains of one seal during the uh, Calamity would be probably somewhere between levels 7 and 9, if it exists. So, that's the theory. Level 6 would c could be um, level 6 would actually be a level you'd probably be very interested in, Edward. The theory the running theory is that there are resources on polyplanal transit theory, which I know you uh, you have a specific interest in, that uh, the, the theory, and none of us know if, if this is true because it's all confidential, but the theory is that level six that has information under that field that could pose problems and could pose perhaps even abilities, dangerous abilities for the plane itself. So things like we were talking about, like poking holes through the barrier See. planes, given that we both recognized it could be quite dangerous to the current plane we're on. If it was, if it were dangerous, that would be about where it would be. The information, not the abilities to do so. Well, I mean, information given into the hands of someone who doesn't have the ability always has a chance to seep into the hands that can. Exactly. The artifacts and the way we could test that would be, again, higher. So theory. None of us actually know if that's what he's into. We could be very much, I could be very much guessing incorrectly, but... I've been at the university a while. There's all sorts of theories from those in the first, second, and third years where it's mostly just rarer and rarer research and... No. Not really about danger. If, if, or like whatever Barkley decides that he wants to get uh, to level seven, he would be considered a, a full-blown monk. That's kind of a big deal. I mean, we knew he was going to get there eventually. He has always wanted to get to level 9, and I've never seen him stop focusing on what he's focused on. There's a determination about him. 
I can't write. That is a big deal. You'd also be the youngest monk since. She's looking at uh, Belle like, this is random trivia. You fucking know it. Oh. <laughs> He 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 would be the ran he'd be the uh, the highest ranking uh, well excuse me excuse me he'd be the youngest elf in uh, not elf wow my god he'd be the youngest monk in uh, uh, at least six decades sixty years. A lifetime for some. I think. Uh, I mean, we don't we don't count the uh, the really really short lived races, right? Because I think. I mean, the Era Crocker monk was like twelve. Wasn't it? Wasn't it, uh, Nell Gelspy? I think, I think it was Nell Gelspy. That's the, uh, the 160 years ago, right? Yes, I think so. Nell Gelspy, short, uh, oh, the goblin lady. Is she still on the, I think she's still there, isn't she? She's old now, but... She was the youngest? I think so. We, of course, we're not including the Ericocra one. Well, again, when, as I'm sure you are aware, when it comes to defining traits like that, uh, there is a, a relative. Right. Also, I'm just gonna out of character. I, I don't want to fuck with the whole age thing with Eric Cockra because it's it's really complicated. I have Fair. previously stated that I don't want to deal with Eric Cockra. Uh, Fair. I just I was just choosing a race that I knew had like thirty years of life. That wasn't I, the point. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Cameron like specifically said for some. <laughs> Therefore, your argument is invalid. Yeah. That's fair. So this. It's all it's all relative lifespan, right? Yeah. Like it's all relative. So well, he's saying he's gonna take the test. I assume he feels he needs the guidance of Ayun to figure out whatever he's doing. Well I just hope it goes well for him and that he takes a little bit more time for himself. Me too. You know you can come back, Alexander. You don't need to brood in the corner. I'm not brooding. I'm just playing. I was listening yes, in. That's why you were playing just the saddest of songs. It was not sad. It was hopeful. Solemn, maybe. What happened? You keep asking me that. I don't know what else to tell you. Things... He's just... Being a butt face. <laughs> He's so wrapped up in his work, he hasn't had time to spend with you in... Is that what happened? Yeah, it is. I'm sorry I haven't been around. He's done this before, and we'd always study whenever he wasn't. We found some pretty cool stories, eh? Good stuff. You know, I mean, I I, as much as I want to stay here and continue chatting, I do have a job to do. I miss you dearly.
<laughs> well, that's nothing, Brian. You can see the tips of her ears are bright fucking red. Uh, as he goes back to to playing. Well, with all of that out of the way, why don't we, like, you know, grab a few drinks, more refills, or head back to the dorms? I'll do a few more drinks, and, uh, she's gonna look around the table. Do we have, like, a double deck of cards? We could set up poker. Oh, you know, I'm always down to play cards. I don't have cards on me, but I do have dice. Ooh, dice. He's banned from dice. What do you mean <laughs> I'm banned from dice? I mean, I wouldn't mind chiming in and playing. Don't you have a pair of that uh, roll whatever you want? Well, now that the cat's out of the bag, I wasn't going to put those in anyway, but now that you've ruined it. Well, <laughs> I don't have a pair of dice, so it'd be... Anybody else? I, I got a pair of dice. Yeah? Fuck yeah, let's go. All right. Careful, wind chimes a shark. Um, <laughs> so this for Rollies this way, um, mm -hmm. we're going to have uh, you uh, send your rolls DM only. How do you do that? So if you go to the left hand uh, side, uh, go just above the question mark is a little D20. In the upper left-hand corner, it says GM. Highlight that, and then you should be able to uh, select your die. Um, are there Give any? Test. Are there any bonuses given for rollies? I forget. Yes. If you have, uh, if you have proficiency. I do have proficiency in a dice set. <laughs> oh, and they get the fucking glove bonus, too! Let's go! Wait, no, I don't. No, you don't. Damn. Oh, well. It's not sleight of hand. Excuse you. I mean, it's still a sleight of hand check, technically. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So, I gave the test roll. <laughs> Are we ready? Ooh. Let's make this a little interesting. Oh, here we go. You roll your dice. You keep it under the cup. Then, you have the chance to either bet more or concede. If you concede, you don't lose anything. We just but don't... if you bet, then you're wrong. Hmm. Adding a little bluff to the game. Who's in? I like that idea. All right. Okay, so how how this new rule set? How would you like to put this into a game form? So how is rollies? Uh, basically, it's still rollies. We still roll all at the same time to you, right? Um, and then we basically go uh, and we have to opt in, uh, bet. Or, um, fold, basically. 
Is the goal to get a higher number or a lower number? The higher, yeah, the, the highest, highest number. number. Can you wait? Is that how you send? Is that how you? No, hold on. Let me actually. You can roll to straight to GM, right? You can just do. Oh, slash yeah, you just roll straight GM to GM too. The reason I was trying to whisper it to myself. <laughs> Because I think you can whisper GM. <coughs> yeah, yeah, you can. But can you whisper G roll? Yeah, you can do slash W space GM. Yeah, but you can't... But but you can whisper roll pretty easily through the way we were doing it before. Roll to DM, yeah. right? Yeah. So. The fact that you kind of pointed that out was what gave me the idea to do this. Okay. All right. Everybody so we ready? just roll a d20? <laughs> uh, we uh, roll it specifically to the DM. Yeah, so whisper me your roll, and then... Perfect. Uh, so whisper me your roll, and then you are betting your hand compared to everybody else's. And it's the highest number? Highest mm -hmm. number is best. On a D20. And you can fold as we go around, right? Yeah. So, for example, um, player one might say, um, I bet that I have the highest number. I'm going to put two coppers down. Okay? And then uh, the next player goes, okay, you know what? I'm going to match that. So I'm going to put two coppers down. And then the next player says, actually, I think I have the best chance here. I'm going to put four coppers down. And I'm going to raise it. It's like, more like poker that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So hey. I have got Rocky and Don's roll. I need Cameron, Lily, and Kale's. I sent mine. Okay. That was a dice set roll. Yep. All right. Okay. Um. Starting bed. Hold on, I gotta whisper to myself. Give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> whisper, whisper, whisper. Um. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Can't you just um, simply like roll you... physical dice and like keep track of them that way? You. I, you could. I could. I, I just hold on. I'm just gonna... I just didn't. That was bad. <laughs> <sighs> oh, anyway, um, starting with Bella. Uh, Bella says, um, "I bet one copper." Um. Wait, how many people are okay, there in rolling what? in total? Hold on, la, 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 la. let me just. This is probably an actual good time to do this. Mm. How many copper pieces are a silver piece? And the ten, ten. Uh, it's a ten ratio for each tier up. So a hundred okay. copper, sorry, uh, ten coppers make a silver, ten silvers make a gold, ten golds make a platinum. Uh, for this, everybody can roll initiative publicly. Okay. Whoops, that was whoopsie. Uh, minus 17, Nine. I accidentally rolled to GM. <laughs> Ooh, not one. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Cringe. It's almost like we get more information by doing that. <laughs> this is just, this is just initiative. Yeah, I know. Being low in initiative count is good. Hey. <laughs> All right, let's see. That was from Cameron seventeen. Brian, seven, Edward, nine, Soren, 
Star, Wind Chime, Tim. Ah. Ah. If only both were here, he'd be in the heartbeat. Seven. Okay. You left me so much. <laughs> so, oh, I uh, remember both. Starting, we're actually gonna just start at the top here. It's gonna be Moonsick. Who's a man of faith to his dice and his dice alone? So, yeah. pretend like that last one didn't happen. That was just an example. Ha ha ha. Um. You are first, Moonsick. What are you betting? I'll wager two copper pieces. Okay, two copper pieces. Wind chime? Uh, I'll raise it to four copper pieces. Ooh. Edward? Uh, I'm gonna, can I fold? You can. Uh, I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm, I, I respectfully am going to fold as well. Brian? I'll call. Okay. Um, um, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to raise it six. So hold on. Was that uh, uh, Hazel? Bella. That was Bella. Bella. Hazel folded. Right. Sorry, I just didn't recognize. Sorry. That voice. <laughs> I mean, they're um, all kind of the table, not gonna lie. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Soren. I'm gonna fold as well. Okay. Moon's thick. I'll raise to eight copper pieces. Oh, Ooh. we have some big rollers here. Wow. Okay. Time. I'll match it. Okay. Brian? I'll raise two silver. One silver. Mm -hmm. Um... Let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll call it. Yeah, I'll call it. I'll call as well. Okay, let's see. That's wind chime. I'll match. I'll match. Your and match if you match or fold, we're just flipping. Yep, it's just the end of this round, so. Um. Yep, I'm folding. <laughs> so, with that, in total, that is two plus four plus four plus six plus eight plus eight plus ten, ten. Plus 50, so 50, 50, 60, 70, 82, 82 copper pieces on the table for this. 82. What? That's not, that's not, that's not that's how that, it works. No, no. There's uh, three silver on the table. Uh, and then one person folded at eight copper, so eight copper there. Two, two people folded with no copper out. One person put in uh, two copper then folded, so it's four silver. The so, the the pot isn't cumulative of what all is being of shipped everybody's in. Everybody's bet it's whatever you bet before you uh, fold, right? Or oh. if, or if everyone decides to keep the wage the same. So right now it's uh, a silver apiece. 
it's well it's a silver piece for those three that are in one person went out at four and one person went out at two so it's uh four silver total Pop. okay sorry i don't know how poker works uh, <laughs> <laughs> i really don't uh, <laughs> okay so with that uh we can go ahead and reveal our role moonzik 13 Wind chime. Seventeen. Brian. <laughs> Wicked smile on her face. Seventeen. Oh. Bella. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> you really thought you were going to get us all to fold with a natural one. To be fair, Look. she was going with the same idea I had. Try and bluff your way to get everyone else to fold. Look. I just thought it was fun. Uh, and uh, I just want to say, I rolled two nat ones. Oh my <laughs> god! What is with the dice today? Uh, so I rolled a nat one for her and a nat one for... Uh... Yeah. Okay, so... Um, I would assume that the plot is split between uh, the two t highest one. ones. Brian and Windchime. Mm -hmm. Seven. Brian, uh, Brian and Windchime. So we each silver. gained one silver because one of our silvers was out there. Yeah. Okay. You could split the diff and roll again to see who claims the pot. <laughs> Feeling lucky? I'm not going to take the silver. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> okay. Want to go again? Let's do it. All right, let me. I it, I think Brian would happily play. Um, I just want to try but... this one more time. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and do initiative again. Now that I wanted to learn how to play this game, right? Yeah. So yeah, this is a new game. Again, this is initiative. I keep forgetting to roll that. To publicly, but oh, oh well. are we not whispering rolls anymore? It's oh, just, oh, oh, sorry. No, this, I, is initiative. this is initiative. I didn't realize. Yeah. Oh, sorry. never mind. Oh. Okay. And so that is a 13 and a 7. All right. Let's go ahead and whisper rolls. So go ahead and whisper your rolls to me. Now we're whispering rolls. Now we're whispering rolls. Okay. Okay, give me just one second. Okay, starting at the top of initiative order, Munzik. We'll keep the same opening as before. Two copper. I fold. Edward. It's not oh, even your bad. turn. My bad. <laughs> Soren. I will raise you five. Ooh. Also, your initiative right. isn't in, Edward. I, oh, what was your initiative, Edward? It's 11. 14? Or 11? Oh. I don't think this hand is quite as good as the last one I rolled. I think I'm out. Okay. Um. I'll, ma I'll, I'll match that. 
Hazel says. Edward. Okay, now it's my turn? Okay, yeah, I pulled. <laughs> Wind chime. Can I raise that one more coffee piece? Mm. Yep. Piece so dark. seven. Up to six. Six? Was it five? Sorry. Uh, Bella says, um, um, I'll raise it two. So yes. to eight. Okay. eight. Moonzik. I'll call. Okay. Soren. I guess I'll call as well. Hazel says, you know, I think, um, I think I'm going to raise it. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to raise it. Uh, let's go buy, let's go do a full, uh, let's go do a full silver. Mm -hmm. I'll fold then, fine. Bella says, uh, oh, so you think you really have it, what it takes to win, Hazel, huh? I will, I will raise it to, uh, to a gold then. <laughs> oh my. Ooh, spicy. Okay. Moonzik. A full gold piece. I call as well. The, the danger of being at a table with ballers like Moonzik. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> no. <clears throat> yeah, I'll call, I suppose. Okay. Hazel says, <sighs> You got me. You got me. I'll fold. Wind chime. I already folded. Oh, right. Both the winners folded almost immediately. Uh, Bella says, uh, the rest of you seem pretty confident. Five. Five gold. Five gold. You think you have That's something there. I know I have something there. Call it. Five gold. Thorin. Yeah, I'll call too. Okay. And what Bella says, all right. Hold it, it is. Uh, that's the end of that. So, five gold for Soren, Moonzik, and uh, Bella. It's a 15 gold pot. And then, uh, and then eight Hazel. For Hazel. Yeah. Was there anybody else? Six for wind chime. Yeah. Six copper for wind chime. Okay. Let's reveal our rolls. Eighteen. Oh. Seventeen. Womp womp. Five. Um. <laughs> Brian, what was yours? Uh, mine was a five, but I wasn't in. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm scrolling back. Um, it was just a four. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you have no fear whatsoever. It's just money. I like this one. Yeah, it's not like you're gambling away your soul or anything, so, you know, it's nothing that's not irreplaceable. I don't know also, anybody in this party that have gambled away their soul. Also, I just prefer to play the game, you know? 
I was hoping that bringing it up to five would make everybody else fold. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, apparently adventuring is actually pretty lucrative. <laughs> So you gain uh, in total Moonzik. That would be uh, 14 copper and 10 golds. 12 what? copper. No, 14 copper. Yes, you're right. Uh, no, uh, yeah, because you you're not including your own bet. Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. After a night of playing games, drinking, and all around having good laughs, uh, you all retire. Where are a lot of you retiring to? We can go back to my room. And Wait, we can then safe. use the portal to actually make my room infinite space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking uh, of like a nice quiet space to scribe all the spells from the ink that I bought earlier. Making your way, uh... Downtown? Back to the dorms. Uh, Walking fast. Faces fast. Faces fast. Home <laughs> uh, you all uh, hop through the portal with a hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, and I assume, Brian, it's you who's staying behind? Yeah. I'm in my <laughs> room anyway. Oh. Uh, so I was going to offer to stay behind. As you all take a long rest. I needed that. Oof. Okay. Hey, long rest. Oh, long rest. <laughs> you know, the thing that's more powerful than the short rest. Yeah, because you get all your magic back. And your health. 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 H-E-L-F. Health. Health. Um, Emily? Yeah? The long rest button isn't working for me. <clears throat> like, I can do it pretty easily manually, so mm. it doesn't matter, but... I was going to say, you I'll might want to refresh to your page. I did. Oh, weird. Yeah, I long rest manually, because I'm a loser. Oh. Mine worked just fine. That's your belief. A few contradicting, overlapping stuff. So, just manually do it. Yep. I already did. Okay. And with that, the next morning you all wake up uh, and begin about your uh, begin about your day. When Brian, uh, well, I should say, is there anything anybody would like to do in the middle of the night? Um, I'd like to scribe spells. Okay. Um, can Brian and Bell and Hazel end up, like, talking a really long time? I'd still get a long rest because four hours, but I just want it canon that they just stayed up till, like, silly, almost, uh, till basically the morning. Um, or, like... Yeah, most of the night, just talking and reminiscing. and Yeah, a long rest can include activities that aren't strenuous. It doesn't necessarily have to be sleep, right? Like, you know, if you just sit around and lounge about all day <laughs> sunbathing, that counts as a long rest if you do it for eight hours straight, right? So it's not sleep. necessarily that you're sleeping, right? So, you know, yeah, but I, I, I mean, crazy. either way, I'd, I'd be able to get enough sleep. It's just one of those things of I want to make it canon that my character would have spent the extra time spending time with her friends. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I don't know if you want to maybe do it off camera or whatever, but Soren is going to end up going for a walk. Oh, another one of those walks with a quotation mark and the necklace. <laughs> I'm going for a walk. No, you oh. don't! <laughs> I love no, that both me and Cameron saw that happening. 
He's what? He's just taking a long stroll through the woods at night. What's wrong with no! that? Yeah, we do a little, <laughs> yeah, we do a little bit of strolling into a mild into a tower of... that's weirdly placed into a forest. <laughs> no! Bitches love cannons. <laughs> With an oddly placed chest there. Mimic. Okay. Mimic. Um, with that, you all wake up for the next morning uh, after having commenced your, your nightly activities and resting and whatnot, uh, ready for a long day of adventuring ahead of you. Um, plans to talk to uh, Brian to talk to your professor. Possibly go visit some temples, get some questions answered, and uh, all around have a good time um, next time. I am actually really exhausted uh, as I'm still recovering from sickness, so we're going to end it so pretty early tonight. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. Reasonable. It's a good session nonetheless. Thank you all so much for watching this session of Wild to Wild Mount. Um, just a reminder that next Monday... Uh, June, whatever the fuck it is, uh, we will not be streaming the Wild to Wild Mount. Whatever the fuck. I don't have the date off the top of my head, so excuse me. Um, we Bless will not you. be streaming Wild to Wild Mounts. It's the first Monday of the month, so. Um, yeah. We are, however, oh. planning on streaming later this Friday, Crypt of the Forgotten Priest. Um, Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, drop a comment in the comment section below if you want to add something. Uh, <sighs> drop a subscription if you want to keep up to date on what I put on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm pretty good at uh, putting content out like the day or two after we do it on Twitch. And then speaking of Twitch, if you haven't already clicked the link below, the first link below... What are you doing? Go follow my Twitch channel so you get live updates on what I'm doing. And then also click on the second link in the description below to go check out Sky Zephyrs. And go enhance your uh, vehicle combat experience. Thank you to Homie and the Dude. But with that, uh, this will be the end of the recording. I hope you all have a lovely night. We'll see you next time.